Welcome to the session on HIV service delivery in the time of COVID. The Asian COVID-19 survey was launched in October 21 in 10 countries in Asia. It was a 10-minute quantitative online survey intended for PLHIV, key affected population at risk for HIV, and prescribers. The survey was sponsored by Gilead and analyzed by the Kantar Group in Singapore. The purpose of having the survey was to assess the status of HIV service delivery during COVID and to identify the gaps thereafter in the hopes of encouraging discussion among stakeholders to address these barriers and limitations. The survey was created with the objectives of identifying how COVID impacted PLHIV and key affected population with regards to medicine, healthcare, sexual behavior, stigma and discrimination, and to identify how it affected clinic time with patients, access to preventive care, access to HIV testing, and the use of telehealth. As of November 9, these were the number of respondents from the different member countries. The Philippines was able to contribute 153 responders. There were five main messages resulting from the survey. Under access to HIV care, prescribers experience disruption. About 50% experienced disruption of HIV care in terms of frequency of visit and patient load. Personal visits at the clinic were less frequent. There was a 30% decrease in key affected population visit and a 38% decrease in PLHIV visits at the clinic. Significant in the Philippines was a 74% decrease in PLHIVs seen at the clinic which was echoed by the PLHIV respondents as well. The second message conveyed by the survey regarding access to ART was that during COVID, prescribers reported more interruption compared to PLHIVs themselves, and that both PLHIVs and key affected populations have concerns about long-term access to medication. The major reason stated for the interruption in ART access is travel constraint. More than half of the respondents who reported interruption in medication either decreased the amount of intake or totally stopped taking ART. Fortunately, among Filipino PLHIV responders, only 8% reported treatment interruption, which was lower than most countries. Having experienced ART shortages and stockouts before, it is not surprising to see that Philippine responders, a whopping 82%, were concerned on long-term ability to access ART. And among HIV-negative respondents, 63% were concerned in their ability to access PrEP as well. The third message was related to access to HIV-related testing. Both PLHIV and key affected population reported decreased access. One out of five PLHIV reported decreased viral load testing frequency, while almost half of key affected population reported decreased HIV testing due to less frequent engagement in risky activities and concerns of catching COVID when they go to testing centers. Compared to other countries, the Philippines recorded a significant decrease in viral load testing during COVID. Main reasons stated were travel constraints and concerns of getting COVID from hospitals and clinics. HIV testing among respondents in the Philippines was significantly impacted compared to our Asian neighbors. Reasons for the decreased frequency of testing were decreased engagement in risky behavior, travel constraints, and risk for COVID. The fourth message from the survey was on HIV prevention services. These were heavily impacted by the COVID pandemic. 61% of prescribers in Asia report that they have decreased or stopped prescribing PrEP. This seemed to echo the key affected population respondents 
report of disruption of taking PrEP. Many respondent countries' prescribers said that COVID limited access to HIV preventive medication. And many key affected populations on PrEP report decreasing taking of the meds. The final message of the survey was about adoption of telehealth as a new mode of communicating with patients. Telehealth was preferred due to convenience, time efficiency, improved workflow, and wider coverage of patients. However, patients do report that not all doctors provide this service. Higher adoption on telehealth and remote refill of ART was seen in the Philippines compared to other country respondents. Remote refilling through a community pharmacy was preferred by most patients, and video consultation was preferred over a phone call. A quick Google search on 2020 internet speeds showed that even at slow speeds, the Philippines has the potential to be early adopters of e-health. 82% of prescribers in the Philippines expect an increase in adoption of telehealth services in the future. With the following reasons stated as advantages, this may be helpful for us to learn from and prepare for in the coming months as we adjust to our new way of life. In summary, this regional survey reveals that the Philippines' access to HIV care is among the most disrupted in the Asia-Pacific region due to travel constraints during COVID-19. Filipino respondents are most concerned about their long-term ability to access ARTs, which is the highest in the region. The survey also provides insights on the adoption of telemedicine as the future of HIV care. Early during the pandemic, UNAIDS and UNDP conducted a survey among 241 PLHIV in a rapid assessment of the impact of COVID-19 on the national HIV response. In this survey, PLHIV respondents reported that transportation and delivery issues, including checkpoints, and the distance of treatment hubs were their biggest concerns all of which relate to access of ARVs. Compared to male counterparts, women living with HIV were found to be more concerned with the need for relief that is responsive to their needs, such as milk and vitamins, and provisions for antenatal care and reproductive health among pregnant women. A thematic analysis of inquiries received by the Philippine HIV Response Center or PRC, showed that these were the main categories of most commonly asked questions. Questions received by the PRC on ART refilling pertain to ART access points and their contact details, requirements for refilling among transient clients. Moreover, the platform also answered queries on vulnerabilities and risks of PLHIV to COVID-19, and ART regimens to be used in the manage of COVID-19 cases. The latter suggests concerns with regards to the implications of this to the ART supply for the PLHIV community. The PRC also received requests for financial assistance to cover courier services to deliver ART and other needs such as food and volunteer opportunities during the pandemic. With the country on strict lockdown in the earlier months of the year, it is not surprising that a lack of mobility is the number one problem, compounded by our unique geography. Courier service were not fully operational, and if they were, clients did not have the resources to pay for them. It was estimated that it would take isolated PLHIVs about 21 hours on foot at most to reach the nearest treatment facility. This problem was much more acute for clients residing in Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, Central Visayas, and Mindanao. NASPCP, which heads the local HIV program, anticipated this potential problem 
and used it as the basis for allowing clients to refill anywhere at any treatment facility close to them. Since we have more than 150 clinics and hospitals, we assume that this would be fairly easy. However, not all have complete ART supply. This problem was further complicated by the concerns of stigma and discrimination when transportation assistance from local government or crossing checkpoints at borders resulted in unnecessary disclosure of HIV status. Even the delivery of ART supply directly to patients' homes caused much anxiety to PLHIVs. Other issues PLHIVs were concerned with were about financial security, employment, and mental health. Because of no work, no pay arrangements, PLHIVs were uncertain as to where they would obtain resources for their daily needs. Beyond this, there were questions around the status of their PhilHealth contributions and what the impact of this was on their eligibility to receive OHAT benefits. In response to these barriers, the Department of Health emphasized the following policies and guidelines that could be used related to COVID-19 response and HIV and TB at the national, regional, and local levels. HIV services were to be made available as they were under essential health services. Access to ARTs were to be ensured for any PLHIV, whether foreign or domestic, who needed them. PhilHealth also allowed for refunds of courier fees from the outpatient HIV and AIDS treatment package. In summary, these are the HIV services that were greatly impacted by the COVID pandemic. HIV testing outside testing facilities, financial assistance, and viral load testing. The impact of COVID on HIV services is immense, but the need to continue providing care to patients in need is of greater significance. Lest we forget, we have the fastest rising rate of new infections in the world, and we have yet to catch up to the challenge presented by the global HIV community to end AIDS by 2030. But we have our community and our patients are part of that community. Patients become partners, and partners become leaders. Meaningful engagement. We are honored and privileged to share with you just some of the best practices in HIV service delivery in the time of COVID-19.